Let's just press record. So yeah, please feel free just to interrupt me um, and, and ask as many questions as you need. So what I'm gonna do, oh, hello, Sarah, you come in. What I'm gonna do um, is just run through, first of all, the functions on the TM6. Um, there's always lots of questions over that. I'm gonna look at the screens in detail. Um, and then I'm going to have a little look into Cookie Do as well. Now, hopefully, we're not going to be longer than an hour, but everybody who knows me knows I love to talk. <laughs> so I will promise I won't share too many stories this evening. Um, and let's hope I can rattle through things quite quickly. So, um, to start with, I am just going to bring you down here because rather than seeing me, I actually want you to see my Thermomix screen. And hopefully, if I get my oops. If I get my lighting right, you should be able to see it quite clearly. So let's just po point the light directly at the screen. Can you, you can see that well enough, I think. I know there's a bit of a ring light in there. Okay, so this screen, when you first switch your Thermomix on, is what we call the home screen, okay? So it's the screen with the three dials. So if you are using your machine in manual mode, you will be using a combination of these three dials. So you've got time on the first one, whichever dial is highlighted, first of all, is the dial that this big silver button here will operate. So here we've got the time dial um, highlighted. So if I just turn this button round, it's going to um, set, set me 57 uh, minutes on the clock, or 57 seconds rather on the clock. Here's the temperature. If I want to alter the temperature, I can just pop it up to, um, anything ranging from 37 to they go up in five degree increments all the way round to Varoma, which is steaming temperature. So a question we always get asked is if I'm using the Varoma, what setting do I need? And actually the clue here is in the word Varoma. So if you are using your Varoma, this, this is your Varoma dish, which sits on top of the machine you will need to use your Varoma setting, otherwise you are not going to um, generate enough steam in the cooking process to cook through what food is in the Varoma. So that's really important, first of all. So if you're using it manually, just want to use it as a steamer, then use the Varoma setting. Now, um, if any of you have opened your Simple Ideas book, there are guides in the back of the Simple Ideas book, which, um, show you what time, what temperature and what speed is required when you are um, performing certain processes. So for example, when you are steaming different types of vegetables, different types of protein, um, just consult the guides and they will give you the sorts of settings that you need to um, use. So for example, when I steam my carrots for Sunday roast, I always have them in the top tray of the Baroma. So they go in here, and I have vegetables sort of stacked up underneath. So I often do my potatoes in a simmering basket, which is that inside. Um, I generally will par, well, I, I sort of steam them rather than parboil, and I will cook them for about um, 20 minutes. Then I will have the, um, oh, my little girl's going to bed. No, no, there you go. Um, then I will have this on top, and I will might have some parsnips in the bottom here. And then generally on the top tray, I have my carrots. My carrots in batons, quite chunky batons, seem to take about 30 minutes. And um, the, cooking temp the cooking time is going to obviously depend on the size of the chunks that you've got in there as well. So my parsnips will take something like 15 minutes. My potatoes will take 20 minutes. So I'm just there sort of putting vegetables in and taking vegetables out as necessary. Um, it's just something that you come to kind of gradually learn and are able to adapt yourself. But also when you're getting started, have a look at those guides in the back of the Simple Ideas. It's also got guides for things like chopping and grinding um, and sauteing. So they're well worth a look and they're often overlooked and they will answer lots of questions um, regarding how to use your machine on manual mode. Um, so going back to the dials, we've obviously got time, temperature, I'm just going to turn that down and then speed. So if I turn my speed dial, it goes all the way round from just gentle stir round to speed 10, which is really 
really um, aggressive. So when the blades are running at speed 10, they are turning about 250 kilometers an hour. So you're gonna do a lot of damage to what's inside there. Um, so obviously if you are just looking, if you're cooking a risotto, um, then you will want to be cooking it on a very gentle stir. And we'll come back to looking at risotto in a minute because I want to tell you about the reverse function as well. Um, you may have noticed, this is something that often gets picked up um, uh, when I um, put the speed function on. If I want to stop at any time, so then it's running, I can just press the large silver button um, and it will stop the um, whatever process has been set, uh, it, it will stop it in its tracks. There may be a slight 20 second delay. So if you are cooking something, you will find you will get a 20 second cook down on there before the locking arms will release. And that is a new safety feature. So that we've recently had that through a software update. So these machines are amazing. They actually get better with age. Um, and, you know, lots of appliances, when you buy them quite quickly, they go out of date, they get replaced by new models. Um, this TM6 is completely different because we've already, since it was launched a couple of years ago, had at least five or six software updates, which have given us new functions, new modes um, and new safety features as well. And our, our last software update has given us a whole new way um, to search cookie do, which I will run through as well. So so we have got a question. Uh, yes. Tarina asked if we could grind nutmeg, which I, I think the answer yeah. is yes. Is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can grind nutmeg. Yeah, it's something that lots of advisors used to do in their demos face to face because it is really quite impressive. Um, but yeah, I mean, I grind and toast all my spices if I'm making curries. In fact, I've got a um, a lamb sarg in the oven now which I'm just slow cooking and I made the sarg sauce in Thermomix the other day and it began by uh, grinding and toasting a load of spices um, and then I found I didn't have garam masala um, and I actually hate the, the shop-bought garam masala there's a there's an overwhelming flavor of one of the spices in there which I don't like I've never put my finger on it um, so now I can make my own, I use, uh, I follow the garam masala recipe on cookie do and I really, really like it. Um, and I just use my other Thermomix to make up a whole batch of garam masala. So I've now got a, a pot of garam masala, which I probably won't need to replace for about six months. Um, so yeah, that's the benefit of, of using one of these machines. You can grind and toast spices really quickly. You don't have to have a separate appliance to do that um, and you don't have to use a coffee grinder and then make your coffee smell of spices. Um, okay, so uh, that's the blades. Now that you, you might um, have noticed there's a little icon underneath the number here. And this means if you touch that icon, you are putting the blades into reverse. So if you take the blades out of the inside of the machine and we're gonna do that right away actually, so you can see how to do that. If you take them out, you'll notice and have a look at them, you'll notice on one side they are sharp and on the other side they're blunt. So when the blades spin in a clockwise direction, they're using the sharp side. So that's when they're going to be doing the chopping and the grinding and the mincing actions. And when they spin in the other direction, they're going in the anti-clockwise way and that's the blunt side. So that's when you're really, you, you're, you, the blunt side of the blade is in contact with the food, so it's not going to do as much damage. So there, there it's um, suitable for things like stirring, gently stirring a risotto. So um, if, you are if you're following, hang on, if you're following um, a, a guided recipe on cookie do, that reverse function will automatically come on. You don't need to think about it. But if you are doing your own risotto, if you're doing your own recipe, or if you're doing something like slow cooking, you might want to think about putting the blades into the reverse and just using a very low speed if you're cooking for a long period of time. Does that make sense? Michaela, did you want to ask a question? Uh, Alison, or... Alison has her hand up, so I don't know if she'd like oh, to ask a question. Right. Hi, Lindsay. Hello. Hi, Alison. Hi. Um, I asked a question before. Um, I think you were busy with the, the guide. Um, when I've been using the manual settings to do steaming of vegetables as per the book, I, um, I made the error of uh, I didn't put enough water in on one of the right. occasions because when I'm steaming potatoes in the Varoma setting, um, the 
it's boiling over, you know, like it does within a pan. So right. I don't know what I'm doing wrong because I'm following the guide in the book, which is saying how many potatoes you need, what size you need to chop them in. I either yep. put them in the, the simmering basket or the Varoma, depending on how much. Yep. But the water is boiling over and it's bubbling out the top. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. How much water are you using? It says in here, because I followed this, it says, because um, as you said, this is really useful, this guide, and I've been doing loads of steaming of vegetables. So for example, yesterday I did 200 to 600 grams um, of potatoes cut into pieces, 17 to 30 minutes in the simmering basket. Yeah. And after 15 minutes, it started to bubble bubble over. It was coming out of the lid at the top. Mm. When I, and then I took the... I took the little cup out to stop it boiling yeah. all the way over. So it doesn't come over, it just sits in the rim of the thing at the top. But I thought, when, have I put too much water? Okay, so maybe try reducing the temperature down to 100. If, you have, if you're not using the Varoma on top to steam, try reducing yeah. the temperature to 100 and see what happens. Because yeah, within, the, because yeah, within the um, main chamber of that, stainless steel bowl the heat is going to be much higher than it is when it right. reaches the Varoma unit at the top so if you've just yeah, got potatoes yeah, yeah, yeah. in there I would tend to try and cook them at about 100 and see if that sorts the problem right. if it doesn't let me know yeah, sure. okay and another and we'll, uh, another yeah, thing we'll pick up. Uh, another another issue you might have this time of year because we'll be swapping seasoned potatoes so they might be quite starchy and the minute they're hot ah. heated, then the starch releases quickly so that'll be the bubbling effect so a way to do that is literally put when you've chopped your potatoes up just put them in a cold bowl of water for 10 to 15 minutes before and what that helps does it re-moisturizes the potatoes happens in kind of the older new potatoes or older potatoes when the starch mm, yeah, just gets yeah, reactivated yeah. It's, it's, it, it's effectively like when you're boiling them in a pan if you don't yeah. if you have the lid on it it'll just yeah. boil over at some point but um, yeah. i've noticed it's been fine with other vegetables but in the book it says um steaming function place 500 grams of room temperature water or broth in the mixing bowl and steam um stated time in the varoma speed one um so I'm not sure what I've done wrong, but I'll try both. So yeah. if I am using the simple basket, even though it says Varoma, I can just set the temperature just, at 100 Yeah, then, so you literally. can override any setting, even on a guided recipe. Right, I wasn't sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can turn any setting up or down as you need to. Okay, and that's, that's again, I'll try. a very common question that we get. But yes, yeah, sure, you know... Sure. You, you don't they're not it's not going to tell you off for sort of cooking in a slightly different way no, you've got uh, full manual control over this and so you know sure. we would recommend you to use it if there's a setting that's not quite working for you for whatever reason that yeah. might be then just make a sm slight alteration and if you're still having a problem we'll have a chat about it okay sure. Thank right you. and no worries at all so that's our home screen so to um, access all our functions, the other functions, I swipe left, like that across, and here are my functions. So we've got scales. Put the scales on and you can weigh. So to reset your scales to zero, you press that green tear button there. Um, so if you notice, if I just press down on my scales, you can just see them operating. I think we've got got three kilos on there yep so you've got a fair old weight you can just use it like a set of weighing scales and pop um a bowl on top and then reset your scales to zero i often if i'm weighing something and it won't go through the you know it's not going to go through the um slots in the simmering basket i'll just put my simmering basket on top and then reset my scales um this is really useful actually if you're going to weigh rice into here because you can just weigh it straight into here uh, into the simmering basket then you can rinse it through and wash it under the tap and then you can cook it so it just saves using that equipment which is what the thermomix philosophy is all about it's using less it's cooking smarter using less pieces of kitchen equipment so you've got less effort and less washing up at the end which is what we all want isn't it um okay so to come out of that if i just turn that function off if i just um, click on the uh, cross then my dough function 
this is one of my favorite functions actually. So I often don't follow guided recipes when I'm making bread. I will just weigh all my ingredients in because I've got recipes that I use. Um, and then I will usually select about two minutes on the clock of the dough function, sometimes three. If I'm doing sourdough, I usually set it to five. One of the brioche recipes uses about an eight minute knead, but that's um, about as much as it gets. And then all you do, once you put your time on the dial, you just click on the next dial to it and then um, set it off using this speed selector knob here. And then you can see the, the, the blades sort of spin. I don't know if you can see that in there. They just sort of give one um, like quick burst, have a break and then another quick burst. And it's um, the knead function is one of my favorite functions. It's super fast which means that um, you can knead your bread in about two, generally in about two minutes, which just speeds up that whole process. Okay. That means you can do bonkers things like when you discover you haven't got any bread rolls at quarter to seven in the morning, you can get bread rolls made and baked by eight o'clock ready for packed lunches, which is what I did last week, which is quite good fun. Okay. My, son, so, my son dropped that on me earlier on. You wanted your brioche um, bread rolls, Lindsay. At oh. two o'clock this afternoon for dinner. <laughs> and did you did you achieve it? Yes, yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. Fantastic. Right. Okay, so turbo. So let's have a look at turbo. Um, so turbo on your, your left dial, you've got a time setting. So you've got one uh, both one second and two seconds. Um, so again, similar kind of idea to when you're using the dough function. To set it off, you click on that dial and then you just turn the selector button. And it will just run turbo. Now, if you find often the locking arms, and it's gonna do this to spite me now, don't release automatically. They just sit there and I quite often get panic phone calls saying my arms haven't released, what can I do? Um, and if that happens, it's just a safety feature. You just need to press the home button and there they go. So they just um, open up after you press that home button. Um, so pre-clean, again, another great function of the Thermomix. Um, you'll see that this dial here is split into four pieces at roughly the three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock and 12 o'clock positions. So if you just turn it round to your first position, you'll get the dough function. The second position, you'll get your universal cleaning. Your third position, you get fat and browning, I think, was it? Ooh, now, now I can't quite remember. And then the fourth position, I think, is browning. But let's have a look and see what it is. I rarely, I, I, I mostly use either the dough cleaning function or the universal function. So I'm just going to click around like that, fat or caramel, and then, and you've got browning. Okay, so it is, again, on an automatic sensor. So as soon as you've... Um, selected which one you want. You just take your hand off of the dial and off it goes. Okay, so this is, it is a pre-clean, it's not a full clean, and you will still need to get your brush inside there. Um, well, depending on, on, on what you've been doing, you know, sometimes it's okay just to give it a little rinse out, but other times you, especially if you've been making bread, you will need to clean it out properly, but it makes it a lot easier to do so. Um, so that's that one. Um, the blender, it's pretty self-explanatory, very clever. It seems to detect what you've got in there, the weight of what you've got in there. Um, and then it blends on a, a specific setting. So you just set the time again, and then you've got speed six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half and eight as well. Okay, the egg boiler. Oh, the Michaela, this has become one of your favorite modes, hasn't it, the egg boiler? <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. Um, I have to say, though, um, definitely works absolutely perfect when you put your eggs in the fridge, because, of course, I don't put my eggs in the fridge. So uh, but no, when my, my son can do this now, 12 years old, it makes the perfect eggs. Absolutely. And the guides actually do say so if you have the information um, page on when you first go into the mode, it does actually say specify that the eggs will need to be cold from the fridge. And the temperature of the eggs, as we found at the macaron class on Saturday, didn't we, those that were there, make a huge difference, actually, 
to what happens when you whisk those eggs and clearly what happens when you cook those eggs. So these are all these times are devised from starting from cold eggs. Obviously, if you're starting from warm temp from room temperature eggs, then the timings aren't going to work out quite so well because they're already warmer than they would be from the fridge. And obviously the cooking process allows uh, for time to bring them up to room temperature first. So um, the egg boiler, just follow the instructions that you've got on the screen. Um, and then you can choose exactly the way you want your eggs. So whether it's soft, medium, soft, medium, medium, hard, hard. Um, so the way you do that, just, just close off the guide. And then again, you've got this sort of split dial on the egg timer. And as I go round, you'll just see it change a bit like with the pre-clean function. And all you do is release the selector dial and it will start cooking. Now, you don't have to put the eggs, I don't believe you put the eggs in the simmering basket, do you? Um, no, uh, you don't. With, you know, it no. says without the simmering basket, you just yeah. add them directly into the bowl with the water, and that's because the blades, so the blades aren't gonna be turning around. So that's the big benefit of the TM6, actually. Um, the blades will can switch off as required. So if any of you are former TM5 owners, um, or t yes, you can, Taruna, you can make your poached eggs. I've done it many times. Um, so I've, um, one of my favorite breakfasts actually is an Eggs Benedict. Um, and not only can you make your Hollandaise sauce in here and it will do it automatically, and we'll look at that in a minute, when we look at the thickening function, um, you can also poach your eggs as well, and you can make your muffins. And of course you can make sourdough muffins, um, which is even better. Um, so where did I get to with the, I think I was saying something about the egg boy. Oh yeah, the um, blade switching off and on. Um, so TM5 owners and TM31 owners, if you've had those machines before, the blades were constantly turning, so you can't do this sort of thing in it, but this has been a new, Sort of design feature of the TM6, which is great. Um, okay, uh, can you put yourselves on mute? I've just got a little bit of background noise coming in again. So kettle, um, I rarely use the kettle, although my children um, use it to heat up milk, actually. So again, you've got this two dial idea. So here's your control dial. So you just need to tap on that and then use the selector to start it. You can um, alter the temperature, which is quite handy. Apparently, it's um, this is quite useful if you're making coffee and things with your Thermomix because you can heat up the water to a certain temperature. And when you're making coffee, you're supposed to have a slightly, you, you, you're not supposed to take your water up to boiling point because it damages the flavor of the coffee. But my children um, he, use this to heat up milk for hot chocolate, actually. Um, and they take their milk up to 80 degrees, which is handy because then it doesn't catch on the bottom. And it's very safe and they can pour it out really easily. They don't have to try and pour it out of the saucepan. Um, so that's that. Um, the warm up function, again, um, a new design update on the six. Um, this is really useful if you cook something early in the day, it's still in the bowl. What you need to do to get your best results is put your butterfly whisk in. And um, I'm just going to show you how to do that while we're talking about the whisk, because it's something that I really like to say to new customers. And I think we've only had a cup in nearly, I've got nearly 200 personal customers now. And I'm proud to say that I've only had a couple of casualties of whisks because I'm really hot on telling people how to insert it properly. So if you, you just pop the whisk in like that, so it just goes over the blades. And then can you see, I'm just gonna give it a little twist, like a tiny little twist. It's like a bit, like an eighth of a turn. So it just nestles up next to that blade. Um, and then that is effectively locked into position. Now you'll still be able to take it out. Oh, she says, no, I can't take it out there. Oh, if you pull it hard enough, you'll still be able to take it out. But for the purposes of the Thermomix, that's locked into position. And that is really important, actually, because if you don't do that little twist, then your blade is likely to ping out. Um, and if that happens and your blades are turning, then you are going to end up with little bits of crushed plastic whisk in whatever you are cooking. And you will have to throw it out and buy yourself a new whisk. So. Um, You've been warned, basically. Um, so for the heat up function, pop the whisk in, give it a little twist, and then um, you, you, would, you can put um, the rest of your uh, 
whether it's a soup or whether it's something that you cooked earlier, back into it um, and then select the temperature to heat it up and it will it will um, cook automatically. So it will set the time automatically once it's detected that the right temperature has been achieved inside the stainless steel bowl, then it will stop. Um, now, thickening mode, oh, one of my favorites. So if you're gonna make a hollandaise sauce, this is how you do it. Um, you would follow a guided recipe for a hollandaise sauce. It just uses egg yolks, um, either lemon juice or vinegar and some butter. And so all you have to do with something like that, and it's the same principle with a bechamel as well, is you load all of your ingredients in and then you just click thicken and it automatically takes over and does the rest. Um, so I would just recommend, I mean, there, there is, this mode is available to use manually, but if you want to make something like a bechamel, um, you know, or a Mornay sauce or a Hollandaise sauce, then just find the guided recipe on Cookie Do and follow the instruction. The thickening mode will automatically be activated when it gets to the right step in that Cookie Do. Uh, now, just have I just seen a question come in? Um, it don't work for me first time. Yeah, I don't know why that happened, um, Catherine, but I've certainly never had a failure on Hollandaise. And I um, have had many failures, even as a chef making Hollandaise. I've been known to go through a pack of about 20 eggs um, just to try and rescue it because I'm determined never to be beaten as people that will know me in the kitchen will tell you. And um, yeah, I had a particular hundred days one day that was not playing ball and I ended up chucking the whole lot in the bin 20 eggs later. So now I don't have to make those sorts of costly mistakes or wasteful mistakes because my Thermomix does it all for me. Okay, so the rice cooker, again, now, there's a, if you're using the rice cooker, I would recommend that you go and find the rice cooker collection on Cookie Do. So that will tell you exactly what rate of rice, how, how much water. Um, it will give you information on cooking times for different types of rice and different types of grains like um, quinoa, vulgar wheat and millet as well. So I'm not going to talk too much um, about that. To be honest, I rarely use the rice cooker. I think it's great if you're cooking larger portions, but if you're cooking um, 350 grams of rice or less, I will always put it in the simmering basket and I use the steamed rice recipe on Cookie Do. It's fantastic. Um, so that is one that I would recommend to you if you are cooking 350 grams of rice or less. Um, and the grains are just individually, uh, they're just beautiful. It's steamed, it's fluffy, um, there's no mush, um, it's, it's, and it's fantastic for making pilau rice with, um, or things like egg fried rice if you want to refry it later. Um, and then onto the second screen, you've got your fermentation mode, which is great for yogurt, um, the slow cooker and the sous vide function. Now I'm often asked about sous vide function. Again, there are recipes on Cookie Do. So if you don't know what you're doing, I would recommend you would follow a step-by-step -step recipe on Cookie Do. Um, to sous vide, if we just have a quick look at the sous vide function, it looks like this. So it's a bit like a, sort of the kettle function. You set a time, you set the, the water temperature and then you just click start. Now, when you sous vide, you would want to have your bowl all the way full to the max, well, sort of between the two litre and the maximum, depending on how much um, food you're putting in there. You then get, you don't need a fancy vacuum, um, what they called like vacuum seal machines. You just need one of these Ziploc bags. Um, you can pop whatever food you want to sous vide into here. And then if you look at the water displacement method on Google, there'll be lots of, or YouTube, there'll be lots of videos on there. In all, you, what you need to do before you sous vide, and this is really important, otherwise you will end up with like raw meat, um, is you need to make sure that you've expelled all of the air from here. Um, so in order to do that, you would fill a bowl with water, you would push the, your bag with your whatever you've got want to cook inside it into the water and you would 
I would say seal up the bag kind of three quarters of the way or five sixths of the way. And then as you gradually submerge the bag in the water, you can then use that water, just pretend it's in a bowl, to expel every last piece of air as it goes underneath, and then you quickly seal it up, and then you will have pretty much an airtight bag. Um, and then what you're looking for is when you drop it into the water, um, it will not float on top. It actually is fully submerged in the water. Okay, so sous vide is just a very, it's kind of a chef -y way of cooking. I've just seen that question flash up. Um, if you go to posh at restaurants, you'll often see steak sous vide. Um, you can cook fish sous vide. You can even do egg sous vide. Egg sous vide, there you go, Catherine, there's a challenge for you. Even better than poached eggs. Um, sous vide just means cooking in a constant temperature water bath it, with a uh, with your food, whatever you're cooking, in a vacuum sealed pouch or an airtight pouch. The benefit to that is when you've sous vide steak and the timings on steak are about, I think it's, I do mine for about an hour at 55 degrees, you get the most succulent, juicy, beautiful steak that cuts like butter. And then to finish it off, because it doesn't look particularly attractive, the problem with sous vide is that you don't get that lovely um, caramelized finish on the outside. So you can just glaze it in a pan afterwards using a bit of butter just to give you that beautiful sort of brown look on the on the outside of the steak. And um, if you look on my YouTube channel, if you so if you go to Lindsay Sadler YouTube channel, um, I did a sous vide demo um, as part of our Valentine's Day cooking experience. Um, so that is on the YouTube channel. So if you want to see what I'm talking about by submit a submerging bag in water, then have a look at that video on my YouTube channel. Okay, have I got any more questions, Michaela? Or is that I covered it. So, but I, I think when you're fir first starting out with these sorts of new techniques, I would always go back to Cookie Do and look for a collection or a recipe that uses those modes and just follow it step by step. Don't try and run before you can walk. Um, it's better off following something which takes you through it in sort of baby steps, step by step. And then you get to learn how to do it, what it is before you try and kind of do it on your own. Um, okay, I think that's about it. And then the slow cooker, again, you can use it as a slow cooker. You can set the time for anywhere between um, sort of one hour or you know less than an hour, um, all the way up to eight hours. Um, and then it, you can select your temperature. Now, usually when you're slow cooking, you would select a temperature of about somewhere between 90 and 95 that sort of simmering temperature um, and then select the time but again refer to an equivalent recipe on cookie do so if you want to make a slow cooked beef stew just look it up on, uh, on um, cookie do and see what the results are you can alter the ingredients you can alter you know you can put the herbs in that you like you can put the vegetables in that you like um, you know, you can sort of swap out the beef for venison if you want to, but just look at the process and understand how that's done um, and then adapt it to your own requirements from there. Lindsay, which one, yeah. which YouTube one did you say um, had your sous vide in? I was just going to um, put Yeah, it's in. just my YouTube channel. So the normal YouTube channel. Do you want me to pick it up and put it in the chat? I um, could do it. No, I'm on there now. Okay. I was just, okay, I was just okay, seeing fine. which demo it was. Which Let's demo go. it was. It, it, oh, sorry. It's the Valentine's Day one. It's where we uh, did, where Darren yeah. was cooking and Marie was doing the cocktails. It's that one. Yeah. Okay. okay. So right. that that's all the functions. Um, now, I just wanted to show you um, how to remove the blaze. A lot of you that if you've, if you've owned your um, Thermomix for a little while, then you'll have hopefully discovered this. But I do have some owners that um, haven't taken their bowl apart and they've owned it for about a year. So you will notice that there's a little lug here. Um, when you take the bowl apart, you just sort of twist it. I always have, you'll have noticed I've put a, um, uh, what's it called? <laughs> Dish cloth, half brain dead here. I was out walking the dog at 6.30 this morning, which is effectively 5.30 because the clocks went forward. So um, yeah, apologies if my brain is not working properly. The blaze just dropped down onto the kitchen towel. You can just lift that off and here are the blades. Um, 
And then you can just put the whole thing in the dishwasher. Now, I always dismantle my bowl before I put it in the dishwasher, purely because I um, find that water just collects, it sort of pools in this recess here. Um, and there's no need for dirty water to pool in there. Um, so I always take it apart. And I like, uh, I like the fact that I can take it apart. I used to have a Vitamix. It really bothered me that I couldn't get the blades out especially when I was doing things like chicken liver pate. Um, I was always concerned that I couldn't get right underneath them and you don't have that problem with the Thermomix. Um, to get them back in, you just pop them in from the top like that. Give them a twist if you need to. Then I just sort of hold them. There's a little kind of uh, knobbly bit on top. It's a good job we haven't got Claire Ball on this, isn't it? <laughs> I just hold, hold that um, and then uh, just pop my um, base on just off center and then just pull, oh, I can never do this back to front and then just pull the two together. The first couple of times you do it, it will be really, really stiff and then it will loosen off really nicely. So if we go then to look at how we cook on the um, Thermomix, um, I'm just gonna pop, so the simming basket sits inside it. You've got a spatula that's got a little lug on here. Most people don't realize to start with that there's a little hole in that simmering basket. You can just clip the spatula, she said. It's easier if you're not trying to do it back to front. Um, clip the spatula into it. Um, and this is designed obviously for when it's hot, you can just lift it out really safely. And you'll also see there's a little recess on the handle. So you can just balance your simmering basket on the top and let everything drain down. See, it's really clever. Minimizing the mess, you don't have to think about where am I gonna put it and, and make a big pool of water underneath. Um, it will just sit and drain here quite happily. Um, so that's really useful. That's the simmering basket. So that sits inside. Then you've got the lid that goes on. If you have got, um, if you're using the Varoma, you do not want to put the measuring cup in here because you want the steam to escape. So the Varoma goes on. Most of the Varoma recipes will use, use a combination of either the dish. So this is called the dish part. This is the tray, that's the lid. If you're lucky enough to have two Varomas um, or two Thermomixes, what I often do is once I have finished um, steaming in the Varoma, I get my second lid. So it's kind of worthwhile getting a second lid. I didn't think these are very expensive. Um, and just lift it off and pop it onto the lid, which functions as a tray. Now, if you've only got one lid, that's fine. You can still take it off and pop it onto the lid to help you carry it over to where it wants to be. But then of course the advantage to the second lid so having that second lid is that you can keep it on and this will keep your food warm, but otherwise you will have to find a way of keeping your food warm because it will cool down quite quickly. So that's that's quite a nice little tip that. Um, okay, so blade cover. This is something that I do recommend people get when they purchase their Thermomix. So my customers will, uh, when you purchase your Thermomix, I always recommend that you buy a blade cover purely now because we are seeing more and more recipes with blade covers. Um, uh, being required and it is quite annoying if you get halfway through a, re a recipe and it says insert blade cover and you haven't got one so for the sake of 19 pounds it's well worth getting so the blade cover you'll notice it's got sort of it, there's a top piece and a bottom piece the top piece um, is a little bit uh, simpler so that's how you can tell the difference between the two and you just pop it over the top of the blades like that it does make a little bit of a noise when it's turning, so don't worry, that's quite normal. Um, but I don't use my blade cover a lot, but if you are using, if you are sous veding, you will need a blade cover to sous vide with. Um, you can sous vide in a simmering basket, um, but your capacity will be greatly reduced if you do that. So um, it is worthwhile getting a blade cover if you're going to slow cook or um, use your machine as a sous vide. Okay, so let's just get you down here and have a quick look through um, the main menu. Let's go back to the screen. So to get access to the main menu, I um, click on the three lines here, and then this brings up the menu page. So you've got my recipes, 
So these are any recipes that you've either bookmarked or recipes that you've put into collections that you've created or your any saved collections from Cookie Do. And I'll have a look at Cookie Do in a minute and show you what I mean by that. Then you've got a recently cooked history, which might be wiped. No, nope, it's not wiped as I um, decided in my wisdom 10 minutes before the Zoom call that I was going to deinstall my Cookie Do app and then reinstall it because we've recently had an exciting software update that I thought I would show you how to do live on this call. Um, so the recently cooked list is obviously everything that I've been cooking in my history. So if you cook something in the last few weeks and you just want to quickly find it, that quite useful. Um, then your settings. Now this is something that I will always say to new customers, um, that the alarm noise that rings after the Thermomix has completed a process can be quite annoying when it goes on for 15 minutes. Um, so I would go, when your Thermomix arrives, go straight into sounds, Turn the volume down to low and the duration down to 10 seconds. So the duration goes on for unlimited, which is just awful. Um, you don't want that pinging at you while you're somewhere else in the house. And especially, this is really important if you're going to do yoga overnight. Um, because the first time I did yoga and it was ready at four o'clock in the morning, I had to jump out of bed because my Thermomix was just making a god awful noise telling me it was ready and it didn't stop. Um, so if it only rings... It's exactly, seconds, yeah. This yeah, happened it, to me exactly this morning at half past four in the morning because I'd rebooted my whole cookie do. Oh no! All my settings had gone back to factory reset. It went. Oh away. gosh! <laughs> yeah. So if you don't want to get up at half four in the morning when making your bit, then I suggest that you um, alter the sound and the duration down to its lowest settings. You can also have a play about with the melody. Um, as well and then you get the same ability to control the volume on the next button as well although it's generally set in in a reasonable place um okay so um transportation mode is an interesting one you can sort of lock your thermomix if you're going to um take it uh, away on holiday or something you can put it into transportation mode it's not something that i generally use but it's there if you want to um and then there's this very scary, oh, I don't want to do that now. This very scary sounding factory reset. Very, very occasionally you will be required to do it. At the end of the day, the Thermomix is a computer and sometimes computers get their knickers in a twist and have a bit of a hissy fit and there's nothing else for it but to do a factory reset. You will not you lose all your cookie do settings. So the cookie, everything that you've saved to cookie do, is stored on the app on the cloud. Okay, um, all you will all you will lose with this factory reset is obviously your sound settings, any settings that you've programmed like that, and then your recently cooked list. Okay, everything else is synced directly with your Cookie Do app, which is just stored elsewhere, so you don't need to worry. Um, one last thing to show you on here is some of these recipes have some really useful features on them. And I'm just I'm just gonna call up the baguette recipe because there's a list of recipes somewhere on Cookie Do, um, which we have shared previously. I think we might have shared it in the group actually, where there are actually um, videos on here now. So if you um, go on to baguette, the baguette recipe, I know this does it, and I'm just gonna click through it very, very quickly. Um, and in fact, while I'm clicking through it, I'm just gonna draw your attention to these three dots here, if you click on those, you can bring up the recipe detail. So just click on that down arrow. So if you want to have a look through at any time, you know, what the next steps are, what you need to get out, then you can go back to your recipe, which is quite helpful. Click on continue, it will take you back to the place that you left off. Um, you can put your scales on. So as long as you're not cooking above speed three, I think you can still use your Thermomix as a set of scales, which is quite useful, actually. If you're slow cooking and it's in use and you want to weigh a few things out, you can still use it in that way. Um, or you can cancel the recipe. Right, so if I'm just going to skip through, what we were finding is that people were really e easily making the bread, but when it came to things like shaping it, that was where customers were sort of finding it a little bit challenging. So now we've got these series of videos on the screen, which are absolutely brilliant. 
you just click play when it comes to it on the recipe. I'm hoping that that annoying ring light is not in the way. And it will show you what to do. When you get to that point in the recipe where you need to shape it, it shows you exactly how to shape it. There we go. So this is a baguette that they're doing. It's really visual and it makes it really easy to follow just having that on the screen. How easy is that? So it's actually so easy a child can follow it. And there's your baguette rolled out. Makes it look really easy, doesn't it? Well, that's because actually it is really easy. So that's a really handy thing to look out for. Um, and on Cookie Do, there are a list of recipes actually which show that they've got inbuilt videos, tutorial videos in them. And the more recipes that get released, um, the more um, tutorials you will get as well. So let's just pop you into that tripod. What I want to do now is I'm just going to share my screen onto Cookie Do. Now I'm going to do it on my phone first of all because I'm just going to come onto the app. Um, in fact, I probably need to have Cookie Do open. So just bear with me while I just uh, don't want to shut zoom down do I um let's just shut I oh, know I have got cookie do open that's fab okay so I'm just going to share content um share my screen start broadcast okay so I want to now come on to cookie do can you see my cookie do app? yes you can because I can see it on my laptop okay now, one of the biggest frustrations that um, existing Thermomix owners had was that every time we came, came to search for something, we had to override our filters. Um, so uh, at the moment, because we are living in the UK, all of the rest of, all, all of the search criteria is just set to find UK recipes. So if I went into search, for example, and then I click on this top button here on filters, I would, if I scrolled down, I would find that the UK was ticked and the English language box wasn't ticked. So in order to find all the English language recipes, I would have to remove UK and then click on English. And can you see how many more recipes I've suddenly got? So I've got 8,000 recipes in the English language as opposed to 2,000 just in the UK. And try as I might, there were always customers, when I shared recipes on my group or on Facebook, there were always customers that would come back and say they couldn't find the cookie do recipe. And this is because invariably they had forgotten when they're putting the English language filter on, they, were, they had forgotten to remove the UK um, filter. So you ended up with still just filtering on the UK recipes because that option was ticked. But can you see if I remove that UK filter, all of a sudden I get 8,000 recipes. We would have to do this every single time when we search for a recipe, which was driving people slightly bonkers, me included. So now what you can do through the app is, can you see the little account, the little person profile up in the top right hand corner? Um, if I just click on this, I can now go to preferences and I can search, I can set my filter preferences. So where I scroll down and where we've got United Kingdom, ah, Michaela, I oh know, update filter. <laughs> That oh my was God, don't give me <laughs> I was going to default to my IT guru there, Michaela, in her day job. She moonlights yeah. as a Thermomix consultant, <laughs> but she's actually some super duper IT whiz who advises some very, very important companies on their IT systems. <laughs> um, so, you know, every time I have a problem, I'm straight on to Michaela. She's a very useful person to know. Um, OK, so I had to do update my default filter preferences. So I'm, here I'm going to go and remove the UK and I'm going to check my English and then I'm going to click save okay so it is automatically saved for me now and that is set as my default filter so that is well worth doing um so for all new um Thermomix owners please do and go go um to the app and do that now if you've had the app installed on your phone for some time you will need to delete the app and then reinstall it. And that's what I was frantically doing at 20 past seven <laughs> this evening. Um, okay. So you'll notice when you get, this is our um, sort of home screen on the Cookie Do app. And you'll notice as you scroll down it, you have got um, 
your sort of own recipes that have been selected for you. Now, this is based on your browsing history and things that you've previously cooked. So it's well worth when you first set up your cookie do account, um, please look at the privacy policy and make sure that you accept Thermomix's kind of request to track your usage data, because this is what is going to enable cookie do to allow uh, to allow you to find recipes that cookie do selects based on what you like to cook. So it's a really useful thing to have on. So if you can scroll across and see the sorts of things to me, uh, it's a, it, it's maybe not quite bang on the money, but then here, but then I do do an awful lot of searching um, uh, for recipes on behalf of my customers. Um, and I post a lot of sort of really random and different recipes on the group for people to try. So it's probably no surprise that I've got a selection of very random recipes there. Um, the latest it, recipes are always featured. Michaela, sorry, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just under preferences, I just want to draw your attention to, you can select more than one language and more than one preference style. And also right at the beginning, you can put your dietary type style. So if you're vegetarian or anything like that, I think there's about half a dozen options at the very beginning. Yeah. Oh, that's no, that's really good. Thank you. No, brilliant. Thanks for adding that in. So we uh, we, we will always draw your attention to the latest recipes. Um, then your personalised cookie do profile. So here you go. You can create a cookie do profile to get the most out of your cooking. So it'll walk you step by step through that. I really love cookie do actually because I find it a bit like reading the Waitrose Food Illustrated. <laughs> Um, there's all sorts of you can uh, you can waste hours on here I shouldn't say waste should I you can spend hours but and then they're, they're actually not wasted and that's a really interesting point because I have a lot of cu customers that at the start say well they can't you know they don't know what to cook and I say well how much time are you spending on cookie do what are you doing and invariably, I find that those customers have not really spent any time looking at Cookie Do, looking for the inspiration. So I really do believe that the more you put into Cookie Do, the more you get out of it. So many people say to me, oh, my God, you find the best recipes. And that is because I sit there pretty much every spare minute having a look, having a browse, you know, searching for kind of random things and then going off down rabbit holes. And then I find all the good stuff. Um... OK, so we've got sort of articles, um, which, again, this is some really nice things, um, seasonal articles. You can scroll across, um, see what we've got and then, you know, read the articles and then it will make recipe suggestions as well. Um, there's always a recipe spotlight. So we've got Hollander sauce, which is obviously very apt. We've talked about this. Then the latest collections are shown here. You just scroll across. And then if you scroll down, you've got your, um, this is quite a, a useful guide for people that, again, aren't quite proficient about make, things like making pastry and what to do with the pastry when it comes out of the machine. So we've got Camilla here, who has done a series of masterclass workshops from everything from sort of shaping bread to blind baking tart cases. So that is really useful for people that just want to learn some new skills. Um, and then you've got your week's favorite recipes. Um, so they're highlighting, spotlighting bananas. And you can, uh, it's just a little reminder that you can browse by recipe category and then looking at uh, and showing you what the latest articles are. So that's all on your homepage. If you want to search, just go into your search. I always use, rather than searching on the toolbar here, I always click the search. Can you see that little magnifying icon at the bottom? Um, if I just click on that, then it brings up the search. Now my filters now, if I click on this filters, um, it has been hopefully automatically applied. Oh no, it hasn't. Hmm. That's interesting. Maybe I, I didn't save my preferences. You didn't, so you where, didn't save them, Lindsay. Oh, just, I didn't save them, no. right? I just talked about saving them. That's about right. So <laughs> um, I was hoping, obviously that would just be highlighted for me, but you can just filter on lots of different things on here. So if you're looking for a particular, if you're you, you're looking to use chicken in a main course, then you can filter on main dishes. You can also use tags. Now tags are quite useful because you can put things in like plant based. Okay, and add that as a tag. You could put things in there like uh, sugar free. 
and add that as a tag. So if you're looking for specific types of recipes, think about tags. You can also input ingredients that you want to use. So you can have a look in your fridge, what sort of ingredients have you got that you want to use up, pop those in. Um, don't put Good. too many restrictive filters on because you'll end up with like nothing. Um, but you know, it's very useful. It's useful to, for you to know that they, they are there. And you can also filter on things like preparation time, total time, time taken and then portions. Ingredients um, one is ace when you want to do random cocktails with your leftover old bottles of liqueurs and things. <laughs> oh, fab. Oh, <laughs> guess you to mention that. Um, OK, so another thing to mention, if you want to. So at the moment, we are searching recipes. If you notice uh, to the left of that toolbar at the top where it says search cookie do, you've got a little drop down arrow. I can change from recipes to collections. And that is how I find all the um, cookery books that Thermomix publish. So these, you can save them to your Cookie Do app and then that will sync to your Cookie Do screen. And so your collections will be available under that menu where it says saved collections. So for, to, to save a collection, I haven't got this Easter one on, I think. I'm just gonna click on that and I can click save. There we go. So it, say, it says it was saved to my recipe. So if I go to the bottom, and I don't, I don't know if you can quite see it on this screen, um, but if you go, you can see there's five icons at the bottom of my screen, which I don't think you can quite see. I think they might be off the screen um, because the uh, Zoom toolbar is hiding them. If you go to the My Recipes icon, which is, looks like that open book and click on it, and then go to up to Saved Collections, what, did, what was it called, Easter? You can see there it is, best of Easter. It's just automatically gone into my saved collections. So there are collections on absolutely everything you could ever want. There are some amazing collections from all around the world. It's well worth actually um, looking for all the Australian collections and going into um, these collections on a fairly regular basis. So. I actually think when you're searching collections, your filter preferences aren't going to um, work because here you cannot filter on language. Uh, you have to filter on country. So if you put in Australia and the US, and everybody always laughs when I say this, it's almost not bo worth bothering with Canada because there's only 24 books as opposed to like the UK, which, which just got over 200. We're gonna put on Canada anyway. They are all the English speaking markets. So all of a sudden you've got 542 results. Um, so there's some really nice, Australia are, are way ahead of the game. They're one of our biggest markets um, and you will find a lot of really useful um, Australian cookery books and um, recipes as well. And especially if you are following a plant-based or sort of restricted like dairy-free, gluten-free diet. Um, you, you can see, I mean, some of these recipes are obviously are going to be duplicated because each market sort of likes to have their own version. Um, but you will find a lot of stuff in here, like this Ginspiration book. Is that a UK one, Michaela? Do you know you, you must have used the Ginspiration book? I haven't drunk for three months, so I haven't dared open this one. Um, I've um, had a look. I can't remember if it's UK, but I have had a look into it because it's got that gin cocktail that we made in the yeah. summer. Yeah. And then the, these are amazing. These decadent desserts with Antonio Bashor. Apparently he is a really, and I, this is very embarrassing to admit, but I'd never heard of him as a chef. I really should know who he is. But apparently he is really, really well known, I think, in America. Um, I probably got that totally wrong as well. It's probably not America, it's somewhere else. Um, but um, he's done this absolutely beautiful collection of recipes. So if we just have a look at that, I can't believe I haven't even saved it. So let's just save that. Um, I think he's quite well known for chocolate work as well. So there's some really advanced, very chefy pro puddings on here that are not your average pudding. I will just point that out. So if you're looking, if you're a you know, great cook into cooking and looking for a bit of a technical challenge, this is the collection for you. Um, and apart from that, it's just then you just need to have a play really with what is there, spend some time having a look at it. Last thing I want to show you on here is if you go to, if you go and have a look at, 
um, I have got created recipes. So these are all my recipe folders. Okay, so this um, cookie do makes it really easy to plan um, your uh, sort of weekly meals and also organize your recipes into folders. So you can see if you scroll down here, I mean, you can see all of my um, recipe folders. I've got loads this stuff in. Um, to create the collection, you just click the green button at the bottom and you can type in what you want to, um, you know, what you want to create. Um, if I come out of that now and then go into something like my week, I'm not very good at, at planning um, my uh, recipes. So let's just go in and put a few things into my week. I'm just going to come back to recipes. Um, and why is it showing me all the French things? Because what have I got on here? Oh, there'll be Canada on there, that's why. Right. So if I come back and I think, oh, that creamy tomato and salami fettuccine that looks really nice. So I'm having a look at that on the app and I think, right, well, that's good. I'm gonna cook it today. So I can click that cook today button. It will automatically put it into my planner for today. Then I think, Oh, I think a bit later to myself, oh, that was really good. I'm going to add it. I'm going to want to do it next, I don't know, next Wednesday. So I'm going to put it into my planner for next Wednesday. Save. Off it goes into there. Okay, so let's just add a couple more things in there. Veg, uh, butter chicken, or Korean fried chicken. Now, this is brilliant, this Korean fried chicken. So I'm going to add that in. I'm going to do that as my Friday night bake away. So let's pop it on to Friday the 2nd and then save. Um, am I still recording? I don't know. Maybe I've run out of space. I hope I'm recording. Yes, you are. Oh, yes, fab. Are. Yeah. Okay. So then this lemon drizzle cake. Okay. Oh, we've got a bit of a bake sale at school tomorrow. I'm going to make that. Um, I'm going to put that in for tomorrow. Lovely. Right. Let's put that in tomorrow. So you can then see, if you then go to my week, you can see you've got your planner with all your food scheduled. Now from there, if I click on those three dots, I can um, either move it to another day I can add it to my shopping list or I can remove it if I want to. So I've got some flexibility there. So let's click add to shopping list. So it's gonna put that on my shopping list because I don't have the ingredients for it. And the chicken and chorizo burgers, I'm gonna put those on my shopping list as well. So then I can go, if, if you can't quite see it because I think the, the toolbar is hiding it, but that fifth icon on the bottom, bottom right, you've got like a little shopping trolley that you can just see, click on that and you've got your shopping list, okay? So you can either search by category, which is quite handy, or you can search, I prefer the look, looking at it by recipes, because then I can see what exactly what I've got and what I need for that particular recipe. If you've got any of the ingredients, you see there's a little square box next to it, you can just click on it and remove them. I've got all of this, don't need all of that, don't need all of that. So I can edit my shopping list. Then if I scroll down to the bottom, I can add, should be able to add. Is it not there? I'm not sure it's there actually. I think on the dots. Another. Is it not on the is dots, it? Lindsay? On the dots at the top right hand. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. No, it's just oh, uh, share or order ingredients. Oh, no, there it is. It's staring me in the face. There it is. There is. Look, the yeah. the <laughs> yes, the big green at the plus. There we go. You can tell I don't actually use this. I, I am the sort of person that I love to go around the supermarket. Uh, at the moment, it's about the only sort of time I can escape from the children in the house as well. So I'm, <laughs> I, I always find an excuse to pop down to add stuff. But you can add additional recipes. So if you need something there that's non-grocery, I don't know, you could just put lipstick on there. Um, or beer or, you know, whatever it is that you want to put on your shopping list. Um, okay, so that goes on there and it should shoot down at the bottom. It will say additional items. There it goes, lipstick. Now, once I've sorted out my shopping list, I can then click on the three dots and I can either share that with somebody. So if I want to send somebody else to do my shopping for me, I can share it with them. Or I can just click order ingredients. Oh, why does it do this? Do you link I think, Tesco's or Tesco's? I don't know. Sometimes it's... Let me just take off that recipe and this recipe. Sometimes it doesn't like it. I end up having loads of random stuff on here. I think it just doesn't like it. So let me just click on order ingredients. There we go. 
and it will ask me to choose my store. Now at the moment we do incidentally have Asda and Tesco's as partners, but there's a glitch with the um, online shopping integration. So they've just pulled Asda and Tesco for the time being whilst they're getting that sorted because customers were just getting a little bit frustrated um, uh, synchronizing their shopping baskets with those two providers. So at the moment you, you've got Waitrose and Sainsbury's or Ocado. I don't really get involved with Amazon Fresh ever, but you can choose your store, Waitrose. So let's have a look. It's gonna tell me how much it's gonna cost in Waitrose. Add to Waitrose basket. If I want to change my store, no, what do I go do? What have I done there? Add something to my list. Oh, no, I've just, have I just cleared it? I think I clicked, um, I think I hit the wrong button there. Uh, it's not gonna let me go back. Okay. Oh. Nothing like live demos with technology. I know, I know. <laughs> right. Oh, what should I, wait, is my, um, my cookie do's completely vanished. Oh, there it is, there we go. So let's go back to cookie do and go to order ingredients. And let's hope that, there we go. If I have a look at Sainsbury's, it will tell me that it costs £95.96 in Sainsbury's. So if I click that back arrow, it's done it again, hasn't it? It usually just allows me to go, uh, let's have a look at that. Click on Sainsbury's. What happens if I use the drop down arrow? Ah, there we go. That's how I had to do it. You have to use the drop down arrow if you want to change between the stores. So there's Waitrose, and then you can see there's a little drop down arrow next to Waitrose, and then you can change between the stores. That's how you do it. If you click that back arrow, it seems to want, it gives you that functionality to add something else to your shopping list. Um, but that is not within the cookie do site. So what you then have to do is just come back into cookie do if you want to go back to cookie do like that okay have i covered everything i think on cookie do um so if i want to decide i want to remove something from my planner i can just click on the three dots so where i it has cooked today and i've got the creamy tomato and salami fettuccine i can just remove it there it goes and then the lemon drizzle cake right i'm going to remove that as well delete okay so I think that's pretty much everything covered on Cookie Do. And really, let me just stop my screen share. Um, let's come back, stop. And I, I, and I always say to people, um, hang on, let's go back into my Zoom and put my camera on. Night, darling. I always say to people, the more you um, put into Cookie Do, the more you will get out of it. So you'll find all these fantastic recipes. Um, and if you're not already members, I know I've got some customers here and you will be members, but if you're not members of my Thermomix Wiz customer group, it is well worth joining that on Facebook. Um, so I run that Facebook group on behalf of all my team members as well and their customers. Um, and there is a lot of help and inspiration and support available through that platform. So I think has somebody just put that, Michaela, if you just shoved that in the chat, um uh, so we I need to go do. thanks no okay we'll do um and um yeah so have a look on the thermomix quiz customer group ask to join that because there's loads of help and support there if you can't get hold of your advisor then you can always ask a question on that group and you will find there will there's a number of different advisors or customers will answer the question for you um actually it usually gets answered before i even see it so that's because us Thermomix owners are a really passionate bunch. Um, the other thing to say is if you're a new customer, a great way to find out about new recipes is to host a demo with your advisor. So advisors absolutely love sharing their knowledge and their you know, discoveries on Cookie Doot with their customers. Um, we love doing demos. It's the sort of the core of our business. It's a great way for customers to find out about new recipes, discover new recipes, learn loads about the machine. Um, and it's also great for us to be able to introduce the Thermomix um, to your friends and family as well, because I can guarantee it once you start using your Thermomix and talking about it, 
all your friends and family are going to know what it is and what it does. So it's a great way of killing two birds with one stone. So please get in touch with your advisor and ask them to do a demo for you. Um, and then I think, have I covered everything else that's in the chat? I know I've gone on a little bit longer. Yeah, um, we've got no outstanding questions in there. No outstanding questions. Right, I'm just going to then stop the recording now because if um, people want to talk freely um, to me, they can. Oh, Catherine said amazing, great. Oh, I'm glad that you've enjoyed it. Let's um, click stop recording. Um, here we go.